Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to show you uh, one of the, I, I, I'm going to say, most important games uh, that I've played so far. Uh, very important for my development uh, psychologically and this game was definitely a turning point uh, and well, I, I'll, I'll give you the context. So, I've played really well uh, before this game, uh, in the tournaments before the game and in the league I, I've had great results, especially with the white pieces. I've been undefeated with white for about 30 games, scoring really well with the London system and basically getting good positions and sometimes saving bad positions, but f rarely. So in this game I wanted to win. I'm facing an opponent who is just slightly higher rated than me. He is an older gentleman, uh, about 70 years old. And I'm playing board one for my team uh, in the cup in my hometown, uh, Zagreb Cup. And I, well, I, I wanted to win. So after this game, uh, I, well, I'll show you the game first. Okay. And okay. I, I don't want to spoil anything, but it was very interesting. So I started with pawn to d4. Uh, we have knight f6, bishop f4, e6, e3, c5, c3, fairly normal so far. Knight c6, knight d2, d5, normal London system, knight g2, f3. And here, of course, black usually plays bishop d6, and after bishop g3, uh, black castles, white plays bishop d3. But my opponent played bishop to e7. Now, you could play bishop d3 here, which is standard. You could also play h3. I sort of wanted to... Uh, save my bishop. Those are the two main moves. I know this position. I've had it during training several times. Castles, bishop d3, b6, still fairly standard. Castles, bishop to b7, and knight e5. And in this position, uh, black should take. Uh, if black doesn't take, then I get my other knight to f3. Uh, there are no tricks with knight h5, and I will be controlling the e5 square for the rest of the game, basically. So knight e5. Uh, you can take with the bishop, and that is the more common move, uh, but d5 leads to an aggressive position for white. Since I wanted to win, I played d5. It's arguable which move is better. I think objectively d5 should be better, uh, even though it's much harder to play those positions because, of course, white will now uh, face d4 at some point. Okay, knight d7, uh, queen h5. You can also play queen g3, uh, uh, queen g4, excuse me. g6, queen g4 now. And in this position, my opponent played king to g7. Uh, this is the move I've never faced before. Uh, okay, let me turn on the engine. The engine says king g7 is good, plus one for a white. a6, preparing b5. Also, uh, a6 which my opponent played a bit later on, uh, serves to uh, prevent bishop to uh, to b5, which strategically could be very annoying. Uh, if I manage to give up my bishop for this knight, then I've achieved a lot because my opponent will not have ideas like rook e8 and knight f8 defending h7 and g6. Also, uh, the f6 square becomes much weaker. So this is a trade I would like to make after my opponent has played g6. So a6 makes sense. But king g7. Okay, knight f3, getting my pieces into play. Rook e8. Uh, now, of course, bishop b5 isn't as strong because knight f8. Uh, I played h4. Why not? And h5. Now, this move uh, is, is a mistake. And the engine now says that black is, uh, that black is almost lost. Uh, it's plus 2.5 for white. Of course, on our level, that doesn't mean that much. But... White should have a better position. Queen to g3. Uh, I could have also played queen to h3 with the ideas of g4, but I wanted to keep uh, some pressure on g6 because my idea was to play knight g5 and then sacrifice either on e6 or on f7 and then to have queen to g6. Okay, a6 now. Uh, preventing bishop b5, I think. Also preparing b5. And in this position, I had a long think. Uh, 
do I play bishop g5 or knight g5? Uh, I ended up playing bishop g5, which the way it played out in the game was a much better move. But I think knight g5 is objectively better and the engine agrees with me. Uh, after knight g5, if my opponent doesn't do anything, I don't know, let's say bishop to c6, something stupid, then knight of 7 and, and obviously white is just breaking through, it's going to be checkmate in a few moves. So he has to play knight f8. And now I simply get my pieces into play. Rook fd1, I don't know, b5, I can break through with e4. If d4, I can play cd, cd, and just have a more pleasant position. Uh, my opponent has no space. This bishop isn't a good piece. Uh, this bishop isn't a good piece. I can play on the c file. I can pile up on this pawn. Uh, I still have ideas of bishop e2 and taking on h5. So that, that's reasonable. But I played bishop g5. Uh, here he played knight f8, and I made a mistake. There's a, a move that's almost winning here, uh, which I did not even consider. Unfortunately, I, I took on e7, which isn't bad. White should still be better, but queen f4 is just crushing. Uh, if, for example, rook c8, then bishop h6 check, king to g8, let's say, Knight to g5, threatening mate on f7. So bishop g5, bishop g5. Let's say the queen saves itself with queen c7, then just bishop f6. And it's going to be game over. King h7 fails to queen g5 uh, because I'm threatening to take on h5. And this is mate in three. So queen f4 would have been way better. And on queen f4, if he does take on g5, then simply knight g5 and... Again, this seems to be a crushing position. Uh, of course, he can defend, uh, but it will be very hard in practical play. But I took on e7, which isn't bad, but worse than, than queen f4. Knight g5 now and f5. Uh, after f5, white is uh, winning, and I didn't play the winning move. Uh, I played for tricks, and I, I thought that the fact that my opponent closed the position down gives me a huge strategic edge because uh, I have these four squares I can use. Obviously, his dark squares are extremely weak. And should he try to trade off the knights with, for example, knight h7, then I simply decline the trade and transfer my knight to f4, where my knight is going to be attacking e6 and g6, two weak points in his position, and his knight is going to be stuck on h7 for some reason. So it seemed obvious to me that leaving this pawn on f5 should be good for me. Again, it's not bad. White is much better if white doesn't take on f6, but taking on f6 wins immediately, which I didn't see. The point is that after, after ef6 and queen f6, I can just go e4. I didn't consider e4 to be a strong move. Uh, in fact, I don't remember looking at it at all, but it makes a ton of sense opening up the position. And basically, if my opponent does nothing, the engine says the best move is king g8. And now simply rook a1. And if, for example, rook a to d8, then I can just go queen c7 and pick up the pawn. Uh, basically, this wins because all of my pieces are so much more active than, than, than blacks that black is going to have to give up some material. Rook d7, for example, I can just take on b6. So on f5, I should have taken, but I played bishop e2. And now again, there are some tricks in the position, uh, but my opponent plays knight h7, which is a good move. And as I said, I don't want to trade knights. I want my knight on f4 because his knight is going to be stupid on h7. That was my reasoning. That is true in this position, but still it was better to take on f6. King h6, uh, getting away from bishop takes h5, uh, knight f4. Uh, he played rook g8 here, and I played queen h2. Now, I played queen h2 because I was afraid of g5. I basically wanted to prevent it by brute force. If g5 here, I can I can take hg5, and then h5 is, is dropping. Uh, but if I leave my queen on, on g3 then g5 is still impossible. Let's see. Uh, here's an improving move. Rook f to d1. If g5 here, I still take hg5. 
rook g5 and simply queen h2 and again there's a weak point here which is going to fall uh, there isn't much he can do about it white is winning g5 was a blunder so queen h2 was unnecessary but i did play it uh, rook a8 uh, rook a d1 queen c7 attacking my pawn knight h3 and he goes back with queen e7 i went back he played queen c7 again and i thought okay i'm not going to repeat once again i think i have a better position obviously i have a better position at this point the engine says plus 1.5 but i wasn't sure how to prove that my my position was better especially if i don't play knight h3 i mean what are the alternatives uh if let me just mention this if in this position after knight h3 queen e7 i play f4 to prevent this idea then after after d4 this diagonal is even weaker uh, i never have the option to play g3 and also my knight is pretty bad uh, eventually it's going to be traded off on g5 and then i don't have a strategic edge so f4 was never really an idea so after knight f4 queen c7 again i can either play knight d3 or knight h3 repeating for the third time and uh, and it will be a draw I, I knew that knight d3 had to be inferior, but I did play it because I didn't want to draw. Now the position is almost equal. He played rook d8, and here I played rook d2. Rook d2 is tactically weak. Uh, because my opponent would like to play d4, rook d2 makes very little sense. But then again, how do I improve my position? I could try playing b4, uh, attacking this pawn from the flank, uh, and doing something like that but rook d2 is i think a more human move and it, it's not bad and i thought d4 was impossible i was correct but uh i didn't understand everything after d4 it's clear that white can win a pawn with with queen f4 check eventually taking here twice and that's what i did uh, but i made the mistake in calculation and this position, I should say, is completely crushing for white. After CD, CD, uh, not queen f4, which I played, which is not bad. After queen f4, on, on the highest level, it should still be winning for white. But a very, very nice move, which I never even considered, rook f to d1. This is just almost game over. If this pawn is taken then queen f4 g5 and queen e3 and black is just collapsing uh he cannot advance he cannot take uh, something is going to drop uh so yeah that that was the move i played queen f4 and the only refutation to queen f4 is pawn to g5 now if pawn g5 isn't played if he plays king to g7 then obviously I'm just a pawn up. So g5. Hg, knight g. And here again, uh, I missed uh, an easy way to, to win the game. And the winning move was rook to c1. Why is rook c1 so crushing? Well, you're getting the c file. You're also getting the queen away from this uh, very nice uh, square on c7, forcing it back. And in many positions, when black tries to unpin with king h7 which is something he's going to have to do uh my rook will be able to come to c7 and either uh, skewer king and rook uh, king and queen or give a check forcing the king back to h6 now in conjunction with the weakness on h5 the pin on g5 my rook on the c file would have been crushing for example queen g7 now i take on d4 if he tries to unpin with king h7 then simply queen h2 and something is dropping queen g6 i i, I can just play rook c7 that that was the point and then follow it up with uh with knight f4 but i took ed4 now the position is equal at this point there was an incident in the playing hall and one guy uh, on one of the other boards for who plays for one of the other teams uh, uh, took a rook and then didn't want to play the rook 
and then the other guy said, you touch the rook, you have to play the rook. And then the other guy said, I, I didn't, I said adjust, I said jadub. And then the arbiter came over and there was a ton of yelling. It wasn't a quiet argument. And then actually my opponent, which I was told afterwards, got up from the board and uh, threw their pieces and their board over, which maybe he should have lost the game because of that i think such behavior is unacceptable but but he only got a penalty i actually uh, spoke to the judge about that to the arbiter about that but in any case he played king h7 here on pinning and it was at this point that the argument started obviously this is a critical position and the argument lasted for about 10 minutes i had maybe 35 minutes on the clock i spent a lot of time here and made a mistake i played king h2 which is reasonable. There are two candidates, queen h4 and king h2. Obviously, now that the knight is no longer pinned, my opponent is threatening knight h3 check. So, after king h2, uh, it's equal. After queen h4, it's equal, but it's very hard to see why. Uh, any defense doesn't work. If he tries to defend, then, then simply knight f4. But he can play knight f3, forcing me to take bishop f3, bishop f3, and now knight f4, defending on g2. And there's a draw here with rook g2, knight g2, and rook g8. I'm going to have to give up my queen, and this is going to be two rooks versus queen. He should be able to hold that, even though his king is very suspicious. But without my queen on the board, that should be okay. But queen h4 was a better move. After king h2, it's still equal, but I don't have the threats. I had before. Knight e4, rook dd1, uh, and he took on d4. And here, uh, so I, my position was winning or much better for the majority of the game, that it was equal, and now I gave it up in one move. Uh, I played a blunder here, which I don't know why I played it. I know I didn't take enough time to think. I just thought that rook d4 was impossible. And then I didn't take the time to, to double check everything. I just missed a, a very, very simple idea. So what I played was f3. The idea is if the knight moves, I win the rook. But the knight doesn't have to move. My opponent can play queen g7 and now I'm just lost. The only way to defend is knight e1, which I didn't play. I played the worst move. Uh, I played g4, and you're going to see how I lost in a couple of moves. Uh, the way to defend here was knight e1, not f3. He is basically forced to take, takes, and it's equal, but white is the one putting pressure on black and not vice versa. Uh, obviously, there, there are problems here, but with my knight on e1, it should be relatively safe. In the game, I played f3, and after queen g7, I played g4. And I missed something. You're going to see what I missed. Before g4, I did start to calculate because queen g7 was a move I missed. Here I had to reassess the position and see what's going on. So I played g4, missing a very important tactical uh, detail. Not detail, a major tactical problem. Hg4, fe4. I took a piece. Rook e4. And I thought I can get away with queen to d2. That's just stupid. G3, King G1, and this is what I missed. I missed Rook takes Bishop. If my opponent doesn't play Rook takes Bishop, if he plays anything else, I can play Bishop F3 and I have a completely winning uh, position. But after Rook E2, I can resign. And I almost did. But I played on, I don't know why. Queen takes, Queen H6, obviously. There are no moves here. My only move is rook f3. And now bishop f3, queen f3, queen h2, g2, g1 equals queen. And, and that was it. Uh, after the game, I was so devastated uh, that I actually didn't finish the tournament. Uh, this is a team tournament, so there were other people from my team who could play the, the next two rounds. But I don't remember that ever happening. I was never so devastated that I didn't want to play anymore. Uh, 
I actually after the game, uh, a friend from from the team and I got a beer. Uh, I, I I don't drink and uh, usually and I I I don't remember much from after the game. I, I was just I was never this crushed and so. The next day and the day after that, I still had that feeling. That every time I lose a game, it's I somehow rebound that I feel better or something. It, that didn't happen after this one. Uh, I was just... I don't know. Um, it's Probably it's because I had good results before this game and I sort of got the feeling on, of invincibility, which is obviously incorrect but I felt that I could beat anybody and I was humbled by this game it's probably good that I was but the my state of mind was just dreadful and it took me about two or three weeks to 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 recover from that I actually played the tournament about 10 days after this it didn't go well I'm going to show you the games uh, Probably I shouldn't have played it, but that, that's the reason I wasn't recording and doing much lately. Finally, I managed to break out of that uh, bad state of mind and, and I'm back. But yeah, this was very painful. Uh, I played poorly. I mean, I had a good position and I misplayed it. There's, there are no excuses, nothing extreme happened. It was all my fault and I played bad chess. In a good position but for some reason it struck me much harder than it usually does okay so this i have to say is the toughest game i ever played psychologically and the toughest loss i've had so far <sighs> it was very hard to record this game uh tomorrow uh, i'm going to show you the first game of versar open and i have a new concept for the road to gm series i'm going to be Highlighting every single one of my mistakes, uh, starting from tomorrow's video. And you will have all of my mistakes in separate chapters so that you can solve them uh, yourselves. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry for the rant and for the complaining. Uh, stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.